One very important aspect of the music production process is mixing. Now, mixing is an integral part of the process and is often done by music producers whilst they're producing. Um, in a traditional sense, you would have the music producer would then export their stems to send to a mix engineer and then the mix engineer would send it to a master engineer and then you've got the finished package. But nowadays with technology and with access to plugins, um, you know, you no longer have to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds of equipment when there's really good plugins available out there. So this day and age, producers tend to mix, or at least I mix as I'm going along. Now, when you're mixing, it's very important to be able to hear exactly what you're doing. There comes a time where in the past, I've spent so, so long just continuously tweaking trivial, trivial parameters just because I just didn't feel like it was finished and I wanted to, you know, keep playing around with different parameters to make sure that I was making the best mix ever. When actually, if I compared back to what I'd done previously, it was worse off. So it's always a good idea to be able to hear what you're actually doing. It's actually ridiculous how easy it is to do in FL Studio. Uh, it was quite embarrassing because I had to, I had to go to ImageLine's actual website and request the input from the developers. I didn't know how to do it. And it's very embarrassing, but I'll show you how to hear what you've been doing. Okay, so I've got a simple piano melody that I've used FL keys for. And then on the mix insert, I've got a copy of 2C Audio's B2 plugin. It's, um, it's a plugin that you can use to create virtual spaces. Uh, it's kind of like a reverb, but it takes a little bit of a different approach. So I'm going to be using this plugin in my demonstration, but you can use any of ImageLine's stock plugins, such as the reverb or delay and so on. Okay, so the melody I've laid down is this. You get the idea. On the mixer track itself, I've got B2 here, and then I've also got B2 on Ascend, you can see here. I know ImageLine have labeled these last four inserts Ascends, but you can use any of the inserts as Ascend. Essentially, all you've got to do is click on the mixer track and hit this little grayed out uh, sort of up arrow here, and now that's Ascend. So I'm sending 100%, if you look up here, 100% of, of the signal over to this insert. See? Cool, okay, switch that off. Switch this off. Cool, okay, let's flick through some presets of B2 and see what we've got. Actually, let's try a special effect. Actually, no, let's stick with four channels. So if you listen, this actual size of the reverb is huge. So it might be a case that you only want to use a little bit of that signal. So I can switch it off here. But I, I still can't really tell what this plugin's adding. Obviously, you can hear you can hear the reverb, but you can't you can't differentiate between the signal return from the reverb and the original signal. This is kind of why I avoid using inserts directly on the channel itself and not for sends. It's also beneficial if you want to send multiple inserts to the same plugin instance. Uh, it saves saves CPU and it's just easier to control. So what I'll do is I'll stop that. I quite like that preset, so I'm going to save this, drag it across to my send. And I'm just going to mute the original. Cool, so now we've got the same instance of B2 on a separate insert. Now what we want to do is we want to send the signal for FL keys over to the send. So all you have to do is click here. Reset that back to 100%. Turn that one off, so you're not hearing that. Turn that back up. So you're hearing the exact same sound as you were hearing when B2 was on the FL keys mixer insert. So what we, want to, what we can do from here is, if I just play it again, click on FL keys. If you deactivate the send to master, 
All you can then hear is the signal return, or the send, send signal. Mix them back in. And then you can just mix the taste. So I can bring that down. Bring this one back in. On the surface, you may be asking, okay, why are you disabling the send to the master when you can just deactivate the insert? Because the original signal is coming from insert one, if you switch it off, it also switches off the send signal. So if we play, switch this off, and then you just have, well, you just have the, the tail of the, and all you can hear then is the tail of the original reverb and it eventually dies out. Switch this back on. Turn that off, and then you're just hearing the send signal. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, it applies to any plugin, not just Beats Audio. So get experimenting in, try it with delays, try it with reverbs, and it's a very cool tool you can use to add some spice to your mixes. I hope that helped. Check back next week for the next video in the series. Peace.